I'm really beginning to believe that society needs a hard reset. Hi, my name is Sydney, welcome back to hell. And as per usual, before we launch in, today's video is sponsored by none other than MetaPCs. Now, over the last little while, I'm sure that some of you have come into contact with the transition story of a man called Chris Tyson. I don't know why I said it like that. Others of you, primarily those above the age of 14, which I actually hope is all of you, may not have heard anything, and for that you should be grateful. Chris Tyson is a regular contributor to one of the largest channels on YouTube, Mr. Beast, who has 146 million subscribers as of recording this video. Chris has been a staple on the channel for a while and is a good friend of Mr. Beast himself, whose name is Jimmy Donaldson. Apparently they grew up together. If you've ever watched a video on the channel, you likely will have seen Chris running around doing some weird stuff with all of Jimmy's other friends. So it definitely came as a complete surprise to the internet when Chris announced in early April that he had been on HRT for the past two months. Admittedly, when I watched Mr. Beast's last video, I was like, Chris, you're looking a little different there, my friend. You call it HRT. I call it the de-evolution of our species. Chris went on to tweet several things about transitioning and being gender non-conforming. And you all know how I feel about that term. It's totally made up. As expected, Chris received a lot of support for his apparent transition, or whatever he's presently doing, but he also received a lot of criticism. There was also a live stream that the Mr. Beast team did where Chris made some very strange jokes about Jimmy being a girl, where Jimmy is clearly not super comfortable with that. And uh, Chris also dressed like this, and the entire vibe is very strange. Jimmy, look, they drew you. Jimmy, they drew you so well. It looks just like you. Wait, oh, also, right here. also Jimmy. Oh, yes. Oh my God, it's Jimmy. How did fan art devolve into? <laughs> that's, that's really good. No, it's and yes, for those of you who are thinking it, I will confirm this live stream and the clips that came from it have resulted in even more negative feedback. Now, with all of that said, the nature of some of this criticism got me thinking. I think it's fair to say that the transition of any celebrity or any popular internet personality e-person, e-people, is always a little bit jarring. This includes their claims of being non-binary, or something similar. <laughs> yes, these are individuals who have real lives and real experiences, but fans and supporters do come to expect their favorite celebrities to look and act certain ways, whether that's fair or unfair. Following a transition announcement, affirmation comes hard and fast from particular parts of the internet, namely Reddit and pink news. Honestly, it's genuinely so funny to me how many outlets are already trying to call Chris they when his own friends are still calling him him. They so badly want they them to be a thing. It's not a thing. Stop trying to make it a thing. We made this one up. But as in the case of Chris and many other married male to female transitioners, people rarely stop to think about the consequences for the wife and any potential children in the situation. I don't know where it came from, but it seems to be this weird blind spot double standard that society currently seems to have. On one hand, the argument is that Chris and people like him should be able to live their authentic lives, regardless if that helps or hinders their family. Their authenticity as a person is paramount. On the other, a few have pointed out that individuals abandoning their families to pursue their own interests is no good, no matter the reasons for doing so. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Trans widows, as they're known, and people leaving their families to pursue transition, and why society responds to that in the way that it does. But before you once again board my hell gondola and we take yet another bonding experience trip down into the depths of weirdness and what is going on, let's hear from today's sponsor, MetaPCs. Where is Sydney? I don't know, her laptop died and she got some new computer or something. What is the name of the company? Who made it? I don't know. Meta something? Meta PCs? Oh God, I've heard of them. We're never getting her back. Sydney! This is my new computer and I live here now. Jokes aside, MetaPCs made me a customized build, which frankly, I am obsessed with. And if you get one, 
you will be too. Meta allows you to customize everything depending on your individual needs and wants. From the hardware powering your system to the cosmetics, custom sleeved cables for your graphics card, and more. But if you're not interested in customization, Meta has ready to ship computers available on their website. And once you get your PC, it's ready to go straight out of the box. Even I admit that I get incredibly irritated by noise, but this PC is so quiet even when it's working hard. Meta PCs are US made, veteran owned, and they even have financing options for wherever you're at in life. So if you too want a PC that is pretty as hell, works like a beast, and is fully customizable, then head over to metapcs.com and use promo code SID to save yourself some money and get yourself a cool PC. In 2018, Chris Tyson married a young woman called Katie Farquhar. The two attended the same university and I don't know, I, I guess she caught his eye? A short time later, in June of 2020, the pair welcomed their son Tucker into the world. Only a few months later, Chris came out as bisexual on his alt Twitter account. For all intents and purposes, and as far as the outside world was concerned, this was a very happy couple bringing up their first child together. Until this point too, Chris also presented as your fairly typical country guy, a normal human doing goofy stuff with his mates. And in years gone by, as far as his humor and maybe even political views went, which he didn't really express very much in the early days, his contributions to the YouTube sphere included consistent knockdowns of woke culture and videos mocking transgender ideology. And while I don't think that years old tweets are great evidence for someone's present views and feelings, I'd still like to add that in 2016, he tweeted about identifying as an attack helicopter. <laughs> People say to me that a person being a helicopter is impossible and I'm retarded, but I don't care. I'm beautiful. Yeah. So there's that. Chris's marriage was always fairly public too, so Mr. Beast videos heavily reference his wife, who also sometimes worked on the channel. That said, people started to notice a shift in the way Chris behaved in relation to his marriage. Photos of his little family together stopped showing up on his social media. Mr. Beast followers speculated that Chris had separated from his wife, owing to the fact that his wedding band had disappeared in videos and he no longer posted photos with Katie. Now, it was around the same time that Katie went AWOL on Chris's social media that his outward appearance started to shift and he announced that he was bisexual. He was openly posting about getting his nails done, trying out a new way of dressing, and more recently growing long hair and appearing overall more feminine. The month before he admitted to taking HRT, Chris claimed that he and his wife, who is reportedly a Christian conservative, have been separated for a little over a year and their divorce is in the works. Now, relationships break down for all sorts of reasons and realistically, we actually just don't know why this one went the way that it did. That said, I can't help but feel mildly disturbed by this growing trend I'm seeing with relation to individuals deciding to transition and breaking up their families. It feels like we have this weird moral hypocrisy blind spot that nobody is addressing. Since telling the world of his new life choices, Chris has been fully embraced by the LGBTQIA XYZ community. Many other individuals, outlets, and online celebrities have defended Chris's honor and decision to begin his transition. This is also obvious in the amount of likes and interaction he gets for every post he makes about the issue. 14 year old audiences go hard. Well, that explains the state of every famous paintbrush looking person on TikTok. This has copyrighted music, which I'm just, I'm gonna talk over top of it, but you see the paintbrush hair. Ugh, comb your hair and learn a skill like welding. On the other side of things, although far less regularly, some people have asked, well, what about the wife and son? More specifically, what about the trans widow that gets left behind in these situations? Yes, that is a real term, do not bully me. Trans widow is the new phrase sometimes used to describe this new problem in the age of modernity. These are women who are left behind by their husbands after they decide to pursue a newfound identity or transition. There are actually several reasons sources for these women now specifically addressing this issue. That said, and like I already mentioned and alluded to, there is a level of moral inconsistency that happens when transition and marriage pop up. And I think it's fair to say that there is a societal wide belief held by many people, most people, 
a portion of people, that pursuing one's own interests to the detriment of one's family is reasonably selfish. When a man leaves his wife because he is no longer attracted to her and feels he would be more sexually satisfied with a 22-year-old Instagram model, rather than the woman who built his home and bore him children, society typically sneers at him. In the same way, society also grimaces at women who cheat and wholly disrespect their husbands because he works too much, providing for the family, and doesn't provide the level of emotional reassurance she feels that she's owed. We collectively turn our noses up at these situations, and many more, because of the selfishness displayed in abandoning the person who you both swore to love and helped you build your home. There is this perception about endurance that exists, where rather than jumping ship, you work things out. And yes, those of you in the comments with a multitude of different stories about why I might be wrong, this is all broadly speaking. I see you, you contradictory creatures. I think it's fair to argue that most people hold fairly straightforward opinions towards commitment and responsibility to the family unit, even if it doesn't feel that way sometimes, and even if different factions on both sides of the aisle try to paint a different picture. All of that said, the moral indignation towards spousal abandonment seems to go right out the window when a trans element is added to the mix. And as with way too many situations these days, moral responsibility or even just like common decency can be circumvented by slapping a pride flag onto your excuse for your bad behavior. Unless, of course, you're Kevin Spacey. Sadly for him, the non-binary excuse wasn't around at the time. I'm, uh, looking at you, Ezra Miller. I'm transgender non-binary and I don't want to be searched by a man. Now, not too long ago, I came across a story in The Guardian. I thought my boyfriend of 10 years was going to propose, then he told me he was trans. It details the experience of Phoebe McDowell, who spent 10 years of her life with her boyfriend, waiting for him to propose so they could start a family. Instead, she discovered after pressing him on the issue that he was in fact transgender and had been struggling with his identity through most of their relationship. She writes, The devastatingly handsome boy I met on the first night of university, whom I'd grown up with and built a home and life with, who was by my side when my dad was sick, who ran me baths and made me ramen, with whom I shared an ocean of hopes and dreams, could or would no longer be mine. The person around whom my world revolved was disappearing, and I was just stuck here waiting for them to go. This sentiment has been echoed by other women who have found themselves in the exact same position. Take for example, Monica Helms. Helms was born Robert Hugg and is also known for designing the first trans pride flag in 1999. Helms, like in these other cases, began transitioning in 1992, well after marrying and having children. Five years later, Helms began identifying as a transgender woman and a lesbian. The 2019 memoir, More Than Just a Flag, describes how Helms' obsession with presenting as a woman led to the breakdown of Helms' marriage after Donna, Helms' wife, discovered that the family money was being hidden and spent by Helms on estrogen, women's clothing, and to pay to attend cross-dresser conferences. Ah. I would cash my paycheck and put some in a personal account before depositing the rest into the family account. Donna knew I did this and occasionally got upset with me, Helms states. Two years prior, the family had lost their home due to bankruptcy. Another story in the Providence Journal discussed Donnie Anderson, previously known as Donald. Anderson transitioned to live as a woman at 69 years old and was elected the chair of the Rhode Island Democratic Women's Caucus <laughs> earlier this year. When Anderson came out to wife Debbie after 23 years of marriage, Debbie was devastated. In one 2018 interview, Debbie described it as salt in the wound when boxes upon boxes of women's clothing that Anderson had ordered began arriving. This took place only days after Anderson's admission of being trans. Debbie said she couldn't stop crying, saying she fled the house two days after Anderson came out. She and her two daughters also sought out therapy following all of this. Debbie made the attempt to stay in the relationship, but appears to have ultimately left. 
What is so sad about these situations is that these women seem to feel this immense amount of pressure to accept their partner as their new sex or identity. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen, love is based on the person, not the dingleberries. Yeah, I added that last part, but you get the idea. In one Guardian article, a woman whose husband transitioned after years of marriage said, my partner says attraction is about the person, that you love a person. I believe you don't choose your sexuality, and I'm not bisexual or gay. Ugh, I'm not gonna lie, I find the attitude of this woman's partner in this example incredibly manipulative. And if I'm being honest, I actually see this so frequently. Especially when I decide to punish myself by going on subreddits dedicated to this topic. I should note as well that this form of manipulation doesn't only apply to women and heterosexual couples. People in these situations are often bullied into staying, and if they don't, they get accused of transphobia or homophobia, or just are generally made to feel like terrible people if they don't stand by their partner. I guess the hard to swallow pill here is that these people, more specifically women, the women that we're talking about in the case of this video, did not sign up for their husbands and boyfriends to start behaving and looking like the opposite sex. And as the woman in the earlier example that I just gave said, they're not bisexual and they're not gay. <laughs> what is even happening? Interestingly, while I was looking at the Trans Widows Voices website, they made note that the UK government even agrees that transition fundamentally changes the nature of a relationship, meaning that a spouse has the right to leave their marriage in the event of the other spouse transitioning. Although this isn't the case all over, as illustrated by one case out of Spain where a woman's partner transitioned after 11 years of being together. While she was initially supportive, she said that she was uninterested in being romantically involved anymore because, well, she wasn't attracted to a biological man wearing lingerie. Soon after, the woman's partner became violent and abusive, and when she attempted to take action by going to the police, she was told that because the legal system viewed her partner as a woman, she was no longer entitled to the gender-specific legal protections a female who was being abused by their male partner would normally be afforded. This is a hell gondola ride indeed. All of this said, it doesn't even begin to address the questions around children in these situations. A website called Children of Transitioners has a collection of stories of just that children of transitioners. I want to start with the fact that we have to pretend that it's okay. Because it's not just about pleasing your parent, which of course we want to do with all our heart. That's why we've changed the pronouns. That's why we can't say daddy anymore. It's more than that because if you say you're unhappy with what's happening, you are uncool, a bigot, difficult. Perhaps you are made to feel like you are hurting your parent if you get the language wrong, or that you are breaking a special pact. Your personal is also political, and you have to be okay about it, or other parents won't get to see their kid, perhaps. Or trans people will look bad. Lots of people's feelings rest upon you suppressing yours. In another post, the writer explains that after her mother left her father after his transition, they had a hard time finding housing, and her mother worked paycheck to paycheck. Where was my father while this was happening? Actually, doing very well. He'd taken a new job in London now that there was no wife and child to look after. He'd started a new relationship with another woman, not telling her about his predilection for women's clothing and the belief that he was a transsexual, and would shortly be living in her beautiful home and spending her inheritance. No money for us from my father, not one penny while I wore shabby secondhand clothes and mum struggled. Now listen, friend of the internet. By no means am I making the statement that all parents who transition abandon their children. I know that is not the case, but some of them do. These examples demonstrate that some of them do. And coming back around to Chris's case, he said that he is pursuing transition and being his authentic self in order to be a better parent to his child. Now, as many of you probably already know, when I make these videos, I try to be as qualitative as I can. 
I like to include as many examples and resources and as much information as possible. And I also like to represent all sides of the issue when I discuss an issue. But much to my lack of shock and surprise, there isn't a hell of a lot of information and hard studies and resources out there when it comes to the issue of trans widows. And that should indicate to us, at least in some capacity, how society and social justice movements feel about this group. They shouldn't exist, so we'll treat them like they don't. But why are they so inconvenient, you might ask? Well, it seems like it's because they represent a very inconvenient truth about a demographic we are supposed to celebrate unconditionally. But in order for this unconditional support to continue on, it inherently means that the people left behind need to stay left behind. The tragedy of that is that these people are mothers and daughters and sons, who often had their lives turned upside down with absolutely no warning, finding what is supposed to be the sacred bond of family broken, sometimes under conditions of extreme duress. As transgenderism becomes more popular, and as more people than ever, it seems, are finding their true selves, we are entering the era of the trans widow, the shadow people who are forced to watch from the sidelines the very social contagion that ripped their family apart continue to be celebrated. Like with many detransitioners who have had their moment in the sun to expose what the transgender movement did to them, I can't help but wonder if trans widows will ever get the same treatment. So far, they haven't really picked up much mainstream attention. But in the end, they may very well hold an important piece of the very complex puzzle that is gender ideology, if only people would stop and listen. Now on that note, and before I open the floor to all of you, this is just a reminder to check out MetaPCs using the link in the description. They are very cool and they mean business. Now open the floor to all of you. What do you all think? What do you make of the Chris situation? Do you have opinions about it? Do you not care about it? Have you not thought about it? Is it not of interest to you? What do you think about trans widows? Have you ever heard of trans widows? Did you know that this was even a thing? What do you think about the fact that society accepts abandonment in some situations, but rejects it in others? And what do you generally make of this issue overall? As always, if you like the video, hit subscribe and the thumbs up button. If you want to leave a comment for free to do so, just be respectful about it. I can't say this anymore. And I will see you guys next time.